Hi everyone, welcome to the second week of Introduction to Causal Inference. In this week, we'll be talking about potential outcomes. And remember that the course website is at causalcourse.com. Don't forget to leave any questions that come up in your head during the lecture in the YouTube comments below, and I'll make sure to get to them as soon as possible. With that, let's get into the material. Here's the outline. We'll start with what are potential outcomes. Then we'll cover the fundamental problem of causal inference, and we'll talk about how to get around that fundamental problem. And we'll finish with a complete example where we actually estimate specific numbers for causal effects. This is a lot of material, so we'll, this will be broken up into a bunch of different small videos. But it's all one lecture in 41 slides. It's just broken up into smaller segments. With that, let's get into what are potential outcomes. This will be a review of the material we saw in the preview lecture. So if you saw that lecture, this first section will be review, but then later sections will be new material. So causal inference is about inferring the effect of some treatment or policy on some outcome. So consider the case that you have a headache. If you were to take a pill, it turns out that your headache would go away. And consider that if you were to not take the pill, you would still have your headache. If this were the case, then you would say that the pill has a probably has a causal effect on your headache. It makes it go away. But what if when you don't take the pill, your headache still goes away? Then would you say that the pill has a causal effect on your headache? Probably not. Then uh, it doesn't seem like the pill caused your headache to go away. So that was the basic intuition for potential outcomes. And now we'll get a bit more specific with some notation. We'll use T to denote the observed treatment and Y to denote the observed outcome. That's what we have on the right in this green box here. And we'll add more notation to this box as we get it. And Y, I, so the outcome for unit I, or, or me in this case, evaluated when I take the treatment is what I have up here on the top right. And then why I value when I don't take the treatment, T equals zero is on the bottom right. So I here is denoting the, it's a subscript to denote a specific individual or unit. This notation is a bit cumbersome, so we'll use a much simpler notation. So on the top right here, we have why I one to denote the potential outcome I would observe if I were to take treatment, if T equals one. So that's what the one in here is. It, it just means if I were to do T equals one. Similarly, Y I zero is the potential outcome I would observe if I were to not take the treatment, if I were to not take the pill. So this zero similarly is just for do T equals zero. Then we can define the causal effect as the potential outcome under treatment minus the potential outcome under no treatment. Why I zero equals zero in this case? So that means, so equals zero means that I still have the headache. I observe a headache. And that's the potential outcome I would have if I were to not take the pill. And similarly, if I were to take the pill, why I one is one means that I would not have a headache. So one means observing one for my outcome means no more headache. Observing zero for my outcome means headache. And then my causal effect would be one. So it's just one minus zero is one.